Hello, my name is John Frungen. I'm executive director of the William J. Hughes Center for Public Policy at Stockton University. And today I'm speaking with Lori S. Carlin. She's the partnership specialist for Atlantic and Cape May counties for the US Census Bureau. Welcome. Thank in you. Term, uh, in terms of the census, what is the significance of April 1st and why is this date so important? Uh, April 1st is the official census day where people are counted once and only once and in the right place of where they're living on April 1st. It's done every uh, 10 years, it's a decennial and it's part of our constitutional duty to be counted for the population count of the dissemination of funds that we have the opportunity for once every 10 years. And what are people required to do to comply with the census and how do they do it? Uh, the census is easier than ever um, this time around. They can go online, 2020census.gov to, it took me about three minutes to do my census online. Uh, there is a paper questionnaire that either they received in the mail or they can request and also by phone. So there's 13 languages, there's 59 languages by phone um, and that's where we are with today. And the census actually went live on March 13th. So globally, we can see, globally in the United States, we can see how the response rate has been. And again, an easy link, we're all on the internet now, here we are in our Zoom meeting, <laughs> is uh, it's 2020census.gov is the site. And then you can go under the response rate mapper to see how your state, county, and towns are doing. I'm guessing this is the first American census being conducted during a pandemic. So has the coronavirus crisis changed anything about the census and has it affected the way people are going to fill it out? It hasn't affected the way people are filling it out because again, we're, we're imploring self-response, but our operational adjustments have been just that, adjusted. Um, uh, for instance, counting the homeless population was supposed to be happening March 30th, March 31st, overnight into today, April 1st. Um, there was a team of people that were just hired to canvas places like the rescue mission, underneath the boardwalks, those kinds of places. That has been postponed for a month. So now we're looking at May 1st, just, just for that, you know, in terms of the homeless population. There's group quarters. Everything has been pushed back about two, two weeks to four weeks at this point. In terms of what I do as a partnership specialist and all around the country, we are still full steam ahead. <laughs> um, thankful to be gainfully employed, let's face it, and um, still contact with you know all of the clients. They're called partners for us whether it's how I met you, John, back in January, you are an official partner of the 2020 census and an advocate, um, you know, just in the New York region, which we sit in for the census, it's New Jersey to Maine, including Puerto Rico. We've been working diligently to have partners just like you, John, with Stockton um, that are still out there. We have 44,000 partners just in the New York region. Mm. So it sounds like things are going ahead as planned with uh, some short delays uh, on the operations that require personal interaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, I filled out my census form online and it was very easy. Uh, I was prompted to answer a few simple questions and I was literally just done in a few minutes. So now what advice would you give to people who do not have easy access to the internet or maybe have relatives or parents uh, who are just not that good with computers? So um, one of the handouts I gave you that I know you're gonna post is uh, the phone numbers. So, you know, if you have a phone, you can call and you can get connected with a census employee in multiple, multiple languages to complete the census. So it's, it's using people like you and I to get to those hard to reach people, to mm -hmm. then get to their people. I mean, what I've always said in presentations that I've done for the census, it's like peeling an onion and we have to keep peeling it to get to that core and to get to that hard to reach area. It's called low response areas. 
And it's something that you can again easily see under census.gov. There's, um, a, it's called Rome and it's a map where we can go in to see historically what the low response areas have been and then how we go to reach them. Right now, you know, we're doing our social distancing, but we're still moving full steam ahead. We're still trying to do online by phone and paper. And Laura, you mentioned those uh, materials that are gonna be posted. The Hughes Center website is uh, stockton.edu slash Hughes Center. And you'll be able to find uh, a link to those documents as well as this video. Um, so, you know, bottom line, why does it matter that people fill out the census? And what is this information used for? So it's a population count only. The Privacy Act, Title 13, Title 26, information is kept strictly private, population count only. I can't emphasize that enough. It's about representation. It's about, you know, who we have representing us in DC in the US House of Representatives. Again, those numbers are based on population count only that happens once every 10 years. It's about redistricting. It's about our areas and our borders getting larger when they, when the numbers show the population count has decreased. If it's increased, you know, your borders get a little smaller and you get more representation. And then to get to people's heart of hearts, um, you know, it's about money. It's about $675 billion of federal funding. Mm -hmm. Huge number. And it goes to things that affect directly to school funding, to lunches, to the SNAP program, to WIC, to, you know, someone having, um, I think of Cape May County and, you know, free transportation to get somebody for dialysis or those kind of things. Just, it touches each and every one of our lives. And I think when we really look at ourselves, like Lori Carlin personally, like what affects me, what's important to me, you know, not going over any more potholes in the road, or, you know, are we finally worthy of, you know, maybe getting, you know, some chain stores or, you know, a, a chain restaurant, but if they don't think people live in a certain area, well, all those services are taken away because the federal funding isn't there. I mean, I've been super involved with the school districts in Atlantic and Cape May County. And, you know, this is very near and dear to them. You know, a teacher applies for a grant, or let's just say, you know, we need new resources for um, the special needs area. Mm -hmm. Well, if it goes back to that application getting approved, well, if they only think that there's three kids with special needs in a certain classroom in a certain school, but there's really 13, those 10 children weren't counted. Mm -hmm. She's not gonna get her grant funded. Right. So we just have to sort of really bring it back to home. And it, right. it's, um, it's as really as simple as that. So it, it affects who represents you, what congressional and legislative district you end up in based on population. It affects how much federal funding comes to New Jersey and to your district and to your hometown, but also businesses use this data to make decisions on where to locate, where to provide services. And uh, so it does affect our lives. Let me hospitals, go back. I mean, just, just think of the situation we're in right now. It affects hospitals. Where are you gonna plant them? Mm -hmm. So let me go back to, you mentioned about the privacy aspect. Um, if someone provides personal information to the census, can that information be used against them, say in a criminal investigation or to enforce immigration laws? Absolutely not. What guarantees are there? Our constitutional guarantees. Mm -hmm. Again, we're protected by Title 13 and Title 26. It's the Privacy Act a population count only um, on the census and you filled it out. It's not asking you your social security number. It's not asking your bank account information, um, nor should it. And um, it's asking you how many people live in your household mm -hmm. and their birth date. And it does ask you for a phone number in case they have questions to call you. But in terms of the Privacy Act being broken, immigration 
you know, someone hasn't paid their child support and the police are going to, you know, come after somebody. Mm -hmm. um, no, you are protected. It's, it's belief that the system does work. And again, you come back to what's important to me. Right. And how so, it affects me. So people should fill out the form. It's vitally important to funding, to representation in our government, uh, to business decisions, and it is private and it will not be used uh, for any other purposes but to count the population. Lori, you wanna add anything? I um, think you've said it all. I mean, it's these are our talking points. They're straight and to the point and they don't change. And um, 2020census.gov, I encourage everyone to self-respond. Let's make today the best census day there has been. Great, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Stay well. You too.